A Tall and Small Collection, Chapter 3, A Brother's First Glimpse. Soren rested for ten minutes before electing to get up and start transporting the fabric scraps back to his family. There was no way it could be done in one trip, so he started with one of the heavier pieces, which was a soft, thick maroon fabric, and began to trek back. He rolled it up and placed it on his back. The path had become more familiar this time, but Soren knew he had to keep his head up if he didn't want to get lost. After all, he hadn't implemented Ray's plan yet of color-coding the passages with thread. While he walked, Soren had a moment to think. If he remembered correctly, Brady had said he was going to make sure the cat couldn't roam the halls, yet Soren didn't see him near the apartment. This was a bad sign. Brady should have been either near the entrance Soren created or somewhere along the hallway. Soren shook his thoughts from his head. Brady wasn't brave enough to go out into the room with a cat on his own without backup. If Brady had gone out, he would have left the cover off or some other blunder obvious for even a human to notice. If the boys' father wasn't back by this evening around dinner, Soren would go look for him. Borrowers were supposed to stay together after all. Soren! The sudden, jubilant cry of his youngest brother, Ray, was enough to send his heart into a rapid shock which just as quickly dissipated. He could see his brothers' round, smiling faces peering out from around the final corner. Soren had set very specific rules to make sure his brothers didn't wander off and put themselves in danger. One of those rules were boundaries as to how far the two of them were permitted to travel from their cots, and they were almost at the edge. Soren smiled but stared at them warningly. They knew better than to go beyond where they were told unless it was an emergency. Hey, Bobbins, he said thoughtfully. Look at what I borrowed. Soren tugged at the fabric on his back. Their eyes widened in wonder as they stood at the edge of the wall, bouncing back and forth on their toes, eager to see what their brother had brought home. Oh, wow, brother! You're the best! It's so soft! said Dorian in awe as he reached out and touched the fabric, squishing it in between his fingers. Yeah, Ray agreed while mimicking his brother's movements. Okay, okay, let's bring it over to the pile, Soren instructed. The youngest eagerly obeyed and took an armful of fabric, not caring that part of it dragged the ground, and carried it to their supply pile. The middle child did the same. After they successfully carried the maroon cloth to their supply pile, Soren pointed back down the corridor. Hey, you two didn't see Bra- er, your dad, did you? asked Soren. The two youngest exchanged quick glances with one another before shaking their heads. No, he left this morning, and said he was going to stand guard, replied Dorian. Why? Soren, in a split second, made the decision to not worry them, but also to tell the truth. No reason, he muttered. I didn't see him in the corridor and thought he might have gone back. He's probably just further down, and I didn't see him. A flicker of worry sparked in the boys' eyes, but they trusted Soren and his instincts. Anyway, continued Soren, I need to get back. There's more cloth than what I brought back and some special thread for navigation. Ray's eyes twinkled, with the eldest mentioning his plan. You mean you're going to use my idea? he asked eagerly. Sure thing, Bobbin, replied Soren. He turned to walk back down the corridor when an idea popped into his head. He turned back around to see his brothers' eager expressions. Hey, do you two want to come with me and help bring back some borrowings? The brothers leaped into the air, cheering. They had never been borrowing before, and this would be their first unofficial time, since it was just bringing back supplies with their brother. Yes! They cheered and assumed their positions at Soren's side. Before they left camp, Soren made them promise to listen to every command he gave, regardless of how they felt, and to be especially careful near the entrances. His brothers only had glimpses of the human world and possessed little knowledge about how to actually borrow, something Soren was slightly ashamed of. He knew he was young at the time, but Soren's father, Aaron, and his mother, Emma Lee, had taken Soren out borrowing for the first time when he was barely seven, the same age as Ray. It was a risk, but Soren was glad he had the knowledge to protect himself and provide for his brothers. 
His brothers agreed instantly and sprung at his heels like summer crickets. They were obviously excited and nervous, two things Soren hoped would keep them on their toes. He followed the passages, ensuring his brothers remembered the way as they went before reaching their final destination. The stack of fabric was there, but that wasn't the boys' focus. Both of the younger brothers were fixated on the electrical outlet. Dorian and Ray had been whispering excitedly up until this point. Now that the electrical cover was ahead, they seemed less certain, their steps faltering as they clung closer to one another. Soren, seeing this, gave a reassuring smile. It's okay to be nervous and scared, but you can't let that get to you. It's that gut reaction that will keep you safe, but you have to use that to help you make quick decisions. Turn your nerves into strengths. The pair of twinkling, pale blue eyes blinked several times as they approached their eldest brother. They finally spotted the fabric a few feet away in the dust and plastered filled hallways and, in their moment of bravery, trotted up past their brother, being as quiet as they could, and began rolling up the discarded fragments of cloth. Soren watched, a smile curled on his lip, before glancing at the wall cover. The outside world was just a piece of plastic away. There was a hesitance in his mind, but also a sudden sense of duty that settled over Soren. They'll have to learn sooner or later. What if I didn't take them out and just let them peer through? They're young, almost too young, but if something happened to me... Soren could still see the jaws of the cat bared at him and feel a hot breath near his neck. He shuddered and shrugged it off. He looked at his brothers diligently, folding the strips of cloth and cut quilting pieces. They won't be able to rely on Brady for any useful training. Guess that's my job. They need to learn sooner or later, and it's not like we would be going out on a mission. This is just a glimpse. It was decided. Hey, do either of you want to take a peek into the apartment? He asked. The brothers who were quite efficient at rolling up cloth, snapped their gaze from their current task to look at their brother, eyes wide with excitement, but also hesitation. Yeah! exclaimed Dorian, who Soren quickly gestured to lower his volume. Dorian instantly looked guilty. Oh, sorry. Remember, we have to be quiet in the walls. In camp, we can talk normally. Here, we have to be a little more careful, reminded Soren. Dorian nodded eagerly and was on his feet in an instant. I will. I'll be the most careful. I'm ready. Ray, on the other hand, seemed less certain. He twiddled his fingers the way their mother used to when she was thinking hard about a problem, before nodding hesitantly. I want to see, too. Soren nodded once and approached the outlet. Now, what's the most important thing right now before going outside of the wall? He asked. An impromptu quiz never hurt him. Don't be seen and don't get caught. If that happens, don't say anything no matter what, answered Dorian with a little hesitation. Ray, befuddled by the question, simply nodded in agreement. Soren nodded his approval, which made the boys beam with pride. Those are all important, but that's not the answer I was looking for, stated Soren. The most important thing right now is to check and make sure, without a doubt, that the room is clear of humans and animals. It's kind of hard to see, so you have to listen. The brothers watched as Soren gestured for them to follow beside him before he propped the cover open slightly and pressed his ear against it. They all held their breath and listened. What do you hear? asked Soren. The brothers didn't have a clear answer, nor did they have a guess. To them, it seemed quiet in the room. You don't hear the lady shows? You don't hear the shuffling slippers in the other room? You don't hear her cat pawing at the door? Each prompt Soren gave seemed to make the sounds that much clearer. The brothers nodded. You heard all of that on the first try? Asked Ray. Soren's lips tugged into a cocky grin. I've had a lot more practice than you little bobbins. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. For now, I can tell you there's nothing in the room, but the old human will probably be back soon to clean up the mess her cat made when it was... Soren hesitated, not wanting to tell his brothers about his close encounter with the cat. Playing on the desk. Soren unscrewed the cover and pressed it open just enough to step into the human world. 
Before he did, he paused and took a deep breath. He stepped out over the threshold of the wall and onto the ground. He motioned for his siblings to stay back. Soren didn't doubt his senses, but he wanted to ensure his brother's first steps outside the wall were safe. He crept to one side of the cabinet they were under before creeping over and checking the other side. He stayed crouched and low. The bag was still on the other side of the room. The door was still shut. Everything was untouched from when he was there last. When he was certain the coast was clear, he motioned his brothers forward. Seeing their little eyes peering out from the darkness made Soren think for a moment about his father. Was this the image he saw when Soren took his first steps into the human world? Dorian stepped out first, checking from side to side just as Soren did. Ray followed close behind, although he was slightly clumsier. Their eyes widened as they stared up at the vastness of the human world. Everything was enlarged and out of reach. They turned slowly on their heels, trying to take it all in. Soren could see they were beginning to spin, taking in everything all at once and letting it make them nervous. Reassuringly, he reached out and grasped both of their shoulders. I get it's overwhelming, he said, keeping his voice low. But you'll get used to it in time. I'm still getting used to it, honestly. The smile on his face did reassure his brothers. The moment reminded Soren of when he finished his first borrowing trip, and the look on his parents' faces. The nostalgia was momentary, but much needed. It also reminded Soren that, sooner or later, his brothers would need to start their training, and that he was already behind. They elected to not walk around the room, much to Dorian's dismay, and retreated back into the walls. All they needed was a taste of the outside world, after all. They collected the fabric and, after a few trips back and forth, managed to bring everything to their camp. While his brothers organized the fabric and picked some out for themselves in their beds, Soren began constructing training regiments for his brothers. He couldn't call himself a decent older brother if he couldn't prepare his younger brothers to survive in a world full of humans. <laughs>